بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم صلى الله عليه وسلم All praises are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who is Lord of all the worlds and master of the day of judgment We praise Allah and we glorify him We seek Allah's peace and blessings and all the messengers that he has sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the last of the messengers that Allah has sent as a mercy to all mankind. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and to our non-Muslim viewers, may God's guidance be upon you. Welcome to this, our special live call-in program. We are going to be with you for the next two hours. And tonight's program, inshallah, we shall be featuring our special guest. We have an international guest, a guest of world-renowned fame, of international acclaim, who has been with us in this country over the past two days. I guess many of you may have been seeing him on television and our advertisement over the past couple of days and weeks. We have in our studios tonight Dr. Zakir Naik. Dr. Zakir, as we have introduced before, he hails from Mumbai, India. He is presently on a lecture tour of Guyana. Dr. Zakir, this is the first time that he has visited uh, South America and the Caribbean. And he has just completed a debate that he had with Dr. Campbell in the USA. He had completed successfully that debate in relation to Quran, Bible, and science. I just remind our viewers that what we have said before, that famous book that was written by Maurice Bukail on Quran, Bible, and science, that was being refuted by Dr. Campbell, and Dr. Zaki was able to successfully debate that issue, and he is now in Guyana. Dr. Zakir, he is the president of the Islamic Research Foundation of India. He is also the president of the Islamic Dimensions of India. Dr. Zakir is scholar. He is 35 years of age. He is a medical doctor by profession. He is a graduate in medicine and a graduate in surgery. He is now a full-time Islamic worker spreading this deen of al-Islam. He has given up the prestigious and lucrative profession of medicine to work in the part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are indeed very honored. He has traveled to numerous countries. He has traveled to Saudi Arabia, to Britain, to Qatar, to Canada, to US, and a host of other countries where he has been delivering lectures and he has been winning the hearts of people wherever he has traveled. You all, my viewers, you have been seeing cassettes of Dr. Zakir Naik. He is now here with us in person. On this program tonight, Dr. Zakir, he would be dealing with the subject, religion in the right perspective. And this is a subject that we all are going to be interested in. He is going to address this topic for approximately 45 minutes. And then we are going to open our telephone lines and we are going to encourage you that you can call and ask questions. Ask questions that are pertinent to the topic that he has dealt with. I want to remind all our viewers that Dr. Zakir is the most humble of personality. His visit here to Guyana is not meant in any way to denigrate or to vilify any of our brothers and sisters of other religious denominations. This has never been the mission of any Muslim. 
It is not part of our teaching that we should condemn or vilify the beliefs of others. I want you to rest assured that Dr. Zakir's visit to Guyana is more or less educational and for the propagation of this deen of Islam. He is a scholar in comparative religion, and therefore he would be dealing with the issues of comparative religion. It is my pleasure now to hand you over to Dr. Zakir Naik. Dr. Zakir. Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Al Rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sabi ajmain. Amma bad. Auz billahi min shaitani rajim. Bismillah rahman rahim. Kul yahil kitab. Ta'ala wila kalmitil sawa'im. Baina bainakum. Allah na'buda illallah. Wala nushrika bihi shayyam. وَلَا يَتَّخِذَ بَعْدُنَ بَعْدًا أَرْبَابًا مِنْ دُنِ اللَّهِ فَإِنْ تَوَلَّوْا فَكُولُ شَدُوا بِأَنَّ مُسْلِمُونَ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي I welcome all the viewers with Islamic greetings Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu May peace, mercy and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of Almighty God be on all of you. The topic of my today's live TV talk is religion in the right perspective. Religion, according to the Oxford Dictionary, means a belief in a superhuman controlling power, a personal God or gods that deserve worship and obedience. In short, religion, according to the Oxford Dictionary, means belief in a personal God or gods. I started my talk by quoting a verse from the glorious Quran from Surah Al Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 64, which says, Kul yahil kitab. Say, O people of the book, Ta'ala ila kalmitin sawa'im, bainana bainakum, that come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship man but Allah. Wala nushrika bihi shayyam. That we associate no partners with him. Wala yabtakhid abad dun abad dan arba bin mindin illa. That we erect not among ourselves lords and patrons other than Allah. Fain tawallah. If then they turn back. Fakulu shadu. Say bear witness. Be anna muslimoon. That we are Muslims bowing our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This verse of the glorious Quran shows us a way how to speak with different types of people. It says, Ta'alaw ila kalmitin sawa'im bainana bainakum. Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. One thing common in all the major religions is that the God which the followers of that religion, they believe, they also believe that he is the same God for themselves as well as for the others. For example, the God which the Hindus worship. They believe he is the same God for the Hindus as well as for the non-Hindus. The God which the Christians worship. They believe he is the same God for the Christians as well as the non-Christians. Similarly, the Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who we Muslims worship. We believe he is the same Allah for the Muslims as well as for the non-Muslims. As I mentioned, According to the Oxford Dictionary, religion means a belief in a superhuman controlling power, a personal god or gods. So in order to understand religion in the right perspective, we have to first understand the concept of God in that religion. And to understand the concept of God in a religion, it is not the appropriate method to observe what the followers of that religion are doing, because many a time, the followers of that religion, they themselves do not know the correct concept of God which is mentioned in the scriptures. Thus, the most authentic and the best way to understand the concept of God in any religion is to understand what the scripture of that religion has to speak about Almighty God. So let's today analyze the concept of God in the major world religions by analyzing what the scripture of that religion has to speak about Almighty God. And thus understand 
the various major religions in the right perspective. First, we'll try and understand the concept of God in Hinduism. If you ask a common Hindu that how many gods does he believe in, some may say three, some may say hundred, some may say thousand, while the others may say 33 crores, 330 million. But if you ask a learned Hindu who is well versed with the scriptures, he will tell you that the Hindus should actually believe and worship only one God. But the common Hindu, he believes in a philosophy known as pantheism. The common Hindu say, everything is God. The tree is God, the sun is God, the moon is God, the snake is God, the human being is God, the monkey is God. What we Muslims say, everything is God's. G-O-D with an apostrophe S. Everything belongs to God. The tree belongs to God, the sun belongs to God, the moon belongs to God, the monkey belongs to God, the human being belongs to God, the snake belongs to God. The major difference between the Hindu and the Muslim is that the common Hindu says everything is God and the Muslims say everything is God's. G-O-D with an apostrophe S. The major difference is the apostrophe S. If we can solve this difference of the apostrophe S, the Hindus and the Muslims will be united. How do we do it? The Quran says, ila kalmitin sawa'in Come to common terms as between us and you. Which is the first term? Allah, na'buda illallah. That we worship none but Allah. So let us understand what is the concept of God in Hinduism by trying to understand what the scripture of Hinduism has to speak about Almighty God. The most popular amongst all the Hindu scriptures is the Bhagavad Gita. It is mentioned in Bhagavad Gita, chapter number 7, verse number 20, all those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires, they worship demigods. In short, Bhagavad Gita says, the materialistic people, they do idol worship. The other sacred scriptures of the Hindus are the Upanishads. It's mentioned in the Chandogya Upanishad, chapter number 6, section number 2, verse number 1. Ekam evidityam, there is only one God, without a second. It's mentioned in the Svetha Svetar Upanishad, chapter number 6, verse number 9. Nakasya kasaj, janita nakchadipa. It's a Sanskrit quotation which means that God has got no lords. He has got no parents. Almighty God, he has got no superior. He has got no mother. He has got no father. It's further mentioned in the Svetha Svetar Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 19. Na tasya asti. Of him, there is no likeness. Almighty God has got no likeness. It's mentioned in the Sita Sutra Upanishad, chapter number 4, verse number 20. His image cannot be seen. No one can see Almighty God with the eyes. Amongst the sacred scriptures, the most sacred of the Hindu scriptures are the Vedas. And there are basically four Vedas. The Rig Ved, the Ajur Ved, the Sam Ved and the Atharva Ved. It's mentioned in the Ajur Ved, chapter number 32, verse number 3, Na Tasipatima Asti. Of him, there is no image. Almighty God has got no images. It's mentioned in the Ajur Ved, chapter number 40, verse number 8. God is imageless and pure. It's mentioned in the Ajur Ved, chapter number 40, verse number 9. Andhatma pravishanti ya asambhuti mupaste. Andhatma means darkness. Pravishanti means entering. Asambhuti means the natural things like fire, air, water, etc. Yajiruve chapter number 40 verse number 9 says, they are entering darkness, those who worship the natural things like water, fire, air, etc. And the verse continues, they are entering more in darkness, those who worship the sambhuti. That is the created things like table, chair, idols, etc. Who says that? Yajurved, chapter number 40, verse number 9. They are entering darkness, those who worship the natural things. They are entering more in darkness, those who worship the created things. 
a further mention in the Atharvaved, book number 20, hymn number 58, verse number 3, Dev Mahasi, verily great is Almighty God. Among the Vedas, the most sacred is the Rig Veda. It's mentioned in the Rig Veda, book number 1, hymn number 164, verse number 46. It says that sages, saintly people, call God by various names. That means Almighty God is called by a variety of names by the saintly people. And in Rig Veda alone, in book number 2, hymn number 1, there are no less than 33 different attributes given to Almighty God. And amongst them, it's mentioned in Rig Veda, book number 2, hymn number 1, verse number 3, one of the attributes is Brahma. Brahma is called creator, God. If you translate into Arabic, it means Khalik. We Muslims have got no objection if someone calls Almighty God as Khalik or Creator or Brahma. But if someone says Brahma is Almighty God, who has got four heads and on each head is a crown, we Muslims take strong objection to it. Moreover, you are going against Svata Svatar Upanishad, chapter number four. Verse number 19, which says, Na tasya patima asti. Of him, there is no likeness. The other attribute given in Rig Veda, book number two, hymn number one, verse number three, is Vishnu. Vishnu is called sustainer God. If you translate into Arabic, it means Rab. We Muslims have got no objection if someone calls Almighty God as Rab or sustainer or cherisher or Vishnu, but if someone says Vishnu is Almighty God, who has got four hands, and one of his right hands is the discus, the chakra, and one of his left hands is the lotus, and he's traveling on a bird by the name of Garuda, or traveling on a bed of snakes on the water, we Muslims take strong exception to it. Moreover, you're giving an image to Almighty God and going against the Ajurved. Chapter number 32, verse number three, which says, Na tasripati ma asti. Of him, there is no image. It further mentioned in the Rig Veda, book number eight, hymn number one, verse number one. March the Nidhi Sansad. Worship him alone. All praises are due to him alone. It's mentioned in the Rig Veda, book number six, hymn number 45, verse number 16. Ya ek it mushtihi. There is only one God. Worship him alone. Praise him alone. And the Brahma Sutra of Hinduism is Ekam Braham Dutya Naste. Niya Naste Kinchan. Bhagwan Eki hai. Dusra nahi hai. Nahi hai, nahi hai. Zara bhi nahi hai. There is only one God. Not a second one. Not at all, not at all, not in the least bit. So if you read the Hindu scriptures, we should understand the concept of God in Hinduism and understand Hinduism in the right perspective. Let us analyze the concept of God in Judaism. It's mentioned in the Old Testament, in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number six, verse number four, Moses, peace be upon him, says, Shama Israelu Adnail Hain Adnail Khad. It's a Hebrew quotation, which means, Yoro Israel, the Lord, our God, is one Lord. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 43, verse number 11. I, even I am Lord, and beside me there is no savior. It's mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 45, verse number five. I am Lord, and there's none else. There's no God besides me. It's further mentioned in the book of Isaiah, chapter number 46, verse number nine. I am God, and there's none else. I am God and there's none like me. It is mentioned in the book of Exodus, chapter number 20, verse number 3 to 5. Thou shalt have no other God besides me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image of any likeness of anything in the heavens above, in the earth beneath, and in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, thy God, thy Lord, am the jealous God. The similar message is repeated in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number five, verse number 79, which says, 
thou shall have none other god besides me thou shall not make unto thee any graven image of any likeness of anything in the heavens above in the earth beneath and in the water beneath the earth thou shall not bow down to them nor serve them for i thy god thy lord i am the jealous god if you read the old testament you shall understand the concept of god in judaism and understand judaism in the right perspective before we discuss the concept of god in christianity i would like to make a few points very clear to my viewers that islam is the only non christian faith which makes it an article of faith to believe in jesus peace be upon him no muslim is a muslim if he does not believe in jesus peace be upon him we believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of allah subhanahu wa taala of almighty god we believe that he was the messiah translated christ we believe that he was born without any male intervention which many modern day christians today do not believe we believe that he gave life to the dead with god's permission we believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with god's permission the muslim the christians we are going together but one may ask then where is the parting of ways the parting of ways is that there are many christians who say that jesus christ peace be upon him he claimed divinity he said that he was almighty god in fact if you read the bible there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete bible where jesus christ peace be upon him himself says that i am god or where he says worship me i would like to repeat there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete bible where jesus christ peace be upon him himself says that i am god or where he says worship me in fact if you read the bible jesus christ peace be upon him himself said it's mentioned in the gospel of john chapter number 14 verse number 28 jesus christ peace be upon him says my father is greater than i gospel of john chapter number 10 verse number 29 my father is greater than all gospel of matthew chapter number 12 verse number 28 i cast out devils with the spirit of god gospel of luke chapter number 11 verse number 20 i with the finger of god cast out devils gospel of john chapter number 5 verse number 30 i can of my own self do nothing as i hear i judge and my judgment is just for i seek not my will but the will of my father anyone who says I seek not my will but the will of almighty God he is a muslim Jesus Christ peace be upon him was a muslim he never claimed divinity in fact he said it's mentioned in the gospel of matthew chapter number 5 verse number 17 to 20 Jesus Christ peace be upon him said that think not that i am come to destroy the law of the prophets i am come not to destroy but to fulfill for verily i say unto you till the heaven and the earth pass away not one jot or tittle shall pass away from the law until all be fulfilled and whosoever shall break one of the least commandments and teach men to do the same shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven and whosoever shall keep the commandments and teach the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the pharisees in no way shall you enter the kingdom of heaven jesus christ peace be upon him said that if you want to go to paradise if you want to achieve eternal life He said that you have to keep the law and the commandments. That means you have to follow all the earlier quotations which I mentioned about Judaism from the Old Testament that God is one, he has got no image etc. Oh, then the